By the time you finish this video, you'll know how to make these interactive doors in Unreal Engine. A while back, we showed you how to bring a character into Unreal Engine and make it walk, run, and jump. But you can't have a game without interactive environments, so let's do this. Uh, real quick, if you want to follow along and you're a pro user, you can go to RenderCrate and download the Unreal Optimized version of these doors. But really, you could follow this tutorial using any old door models you have lying around, or even just basic cubes. Start by creating a folder in your project called Blueprints. It's good to stay organized. Right click on the folder and create a new Blueprint class. Choose the first option, Actor Class. I'm going to name mine BP underscore Single Door. Double click to open it up. To make our door, first we need to add the 3D model to the actor. So click on this Add button in the top left and add a static mesh and name it Frame. And then click it again, add another static mesh and call that one Door. Click on the Frame static mesh and go to the right side and pick the single door frame from the list. Then select the Door static mesh and select the single door from the list, just like we did with the frame. Now that we have the geometry set up, we need to set up the functionality. The way we want this to work is, when the player overlaps with the door actor, we want the door to open. But we don't want the door to start opening when the player runs into it. So let's create an invisible box that will act as a trigger to cause the door to open and close sooner. Click on Default Scene Root and then add a collision box to the scene. Scale it so it sticks out from the door on both sides. In the top left, click Compile and Save, and then drag the single door actor out into the scene so we can start testing it. Right now, nothing happens when the player interacts with the box, so let's set that up. Instead of just telling you what buttons to push, I'm going to walk you through the logic of how I set this up so that you can apply this process to any other interactive scenery. So there might be times where I have you undo things that we just did, but don't worry, that's part of the learning process. Click back into the single door blueprint. In the viewport tab, move the door to the position you want it to take when it's open, and take note of the location values over here on the right side. A value of 180 to 200 in the Z direction is probably okay, but let's set it back to zero for now. Now click on the event tab, and keep in mind what we're trying to achieve here. When the player enters the invisible box, we want the door to move up 200 centimeters on the Z axis. So press tab and search for an event node called Actor Begin Overlap. Drag this execution pin from that node into the scene and search for Set Relative Location and pick the one for the door. What this will do is offset the location of the door relative to the entire actor. Right click on the orange input and choose Split Struct Pin. This will allow us to edit each axis individually. In New Location Z, type 200 and then press Compile and Save and let's test it out. You can see that when the player enters the invisible box, the door instantly jumps open. It doesn't animate smoothly, and it also doesn't close when we leave the box. So let's fix that first. Go back to the door actor and into the event graph and search for a node called actor end overlap. And let's duplicate this existing set relative location and door node and plug that into the new event we just created. Be sure to set the Z value back to zero. This should close the door when we exit the cube. Press compile, save, and let's test it. Okay, awesome. If you want a simple stylized door, then you're done. But if you want to make it animate and open realistically, there's a little bit more setup to do. Go back into your Blueprints event graph. What we need to do is create a blend between the open position and the closed position so it doesn't instantly jump between them. We need to animate it from 0 to 200 on the z-axis. To create a soft blend between two numbers, we need to create a node called Linear Interpolate, or LERP for short. The way the node works is like this. You enter two values into A and B, and in our case, it's 0 to 200. And then the input called alpha will blend between them. When alpha is set to 0, then the output of the lerp node is A, or 0 in this case. If the alpha is set to 1, then the output of the lerp node is B, or 200. And if the alpha is 0 0.5, then the output of lerp is exactly in the middle of A and B, which is 100 in our case. So we need some sort of node that will go from 0 to 1 over time. Let's right click and search for add timeline. We can name this timeline single door open underscore TL for timeline. Double click on the new timeline node to edit. Right now it looks blank, but we can click add track and choose a float track. Let's name it alpha. You can name it anything, but we're going to plug it into the alpha of the lerp node. So this helps it make sense. Now right click anywhere in the timeline and add a keyframe. Do it again to add a second one. Select the first keyframe and set the time to zero and the value to zero. And then select the second keyframe and set the value to one. And the time is really up to you. How long do you want the door to take to open? I think I'll choose 0 0.5 seconds so that our players don't have to stand around waiting. Be sure to trim the timeline to the length of your animation. Press F to frame the new curve. If you're familiar with keyframing in other programs, you could add all kinds of wacky curve profiles if you feel like it, or you could just leave it how it is. No big deal. Press Compile and Save, and then go back to the Event Graph tab. Let's plug the Alpha Out from the Timeline into the Alpha In of the Lerp node, and then plug the Return value from the Lerp into the Z channel of Set Relative Location. If we want this to work, we need to reroute the Actor Begin Overlap into the Play input for the Timeline. And quick tip about blueprints, this home plate looking thing is called the Execution Pin. If a node has one of these on the left side, which is the input side, it needs something plugged in there or it won't work. So let's plug the Out Pin from the Timeline into the in pin for set relative location. 
Compile and save and let's test it out. Okay, it works, but it won't animate closed and it starts doing weird stuff if you go back and forth. So let's fix the door closing animation. Go back to your blueprint. Now don't worry, we don't have to set up a whole new animation for the door closing. You can actually take this actor end overlap and plug it into the reverse node of the timeline. Now when the player leaves the invisible box, the animation will play in reverse. This extra set relative location node is now unnecessary, so you can delete it. If you compile and save, you can test it and the door should work properly. And now we can actually place copies of this actor all over the scene wherever we need a door. Let me show you the real power of blueprints really quick. Let's say we want one of the doors to be broken so it only opens halfway. We can set it up so our artists can easily make whatever changes they need on the fly. Go back to your blueprints and zoom in on this lerp node. You can see we have the value A set to 0 and B is set to 200. But what if we want to be able to really quickly change the B value on the fly for each individual instance of this door? For that we need a variable. Over on the left in the variables menu, click on the plus to add a new variable. Let's name it max door open. Just to the right of that, let's change it to a float. That means the variable can be basically any number we choose. Press compile and then over on the right we can type in 200. Now drag your variable into the graph and choose get max door open. Plug it into the B value of lerp. Okay, so far nothing's different, but if we go over here to the variable again on the left, click this little eyeball. We can expose it to our artists as an option that they can change. Let me show you how that works. Press compile and save, and if I click on one of these doors I can see this new option called max door open with the value of 200. If I want this door to be broken and only open halfway, I can change it to 100. On the other door I'll leave it at 200. Let's press play and test it out. Using this technique, you could trigger all kinds of things such as lights turning on or changing color, or even elevators going up and down. If this tutorial sparked a new interest in you and you want to get a lot deeper into game design, head over to our friends at cgspectrum.com. They have tons of 3D animation tutorials, but this one right here on Intro to Game Design will get you a lot more information on the subject. If you create anything cool using the simple workflow, be sure to share it with us on Discord or tag us on Instagram. And if you have a better way of making doors, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear it. Later, creators.